One of the most common issues in the ventilation industry is noise. And that's typically because heat recovery units will run for 24 hours a day. Now during the design stage, what will happen is things will get value engineered. So heat recovery units that would be perfectly sized will all of a sudden be a cheaper or a smaller unit. Also the ductwork could be changed, attenuators could be removed, but this is a complete false economy. When somebody is moved into the property, they can get what's known as a dripping tap syndrome. Uh, by this I mean once they hear it, then that's all they're gonna hear. So when they're trying to sleep at night, if they do hear a noise from the ventilation system, it's gonna keep them awake. But this needn't be an issue. So now I'm gonna talk about the top five things to consider to eliminate any kind of noise issues. First one would be to look to design out the noise. So that's using things like attenuators. Now that might be a attenuator built into a, a semi-rigid manifold, or it might be a separate attenuator for a branch system. Another thing to consider would be the location of the heat recovery unit when designing. So don't put it in a, a wardrobe, in a bedroom, or anything like that where noise is gonna be quite important. Other things to consider would be to use low velocity ductwork, such as semi-rigid ducting. Um, or make sure the rigid ductwork is sized correctly. Other things uh, as far as design is concerned is the duct length limits. So if you have long duct runs then it's an increased pressure drop in the system and the heat recovery unit has to be turned up. If you shorten those duct runs and start to use what's known as coanda effect grills then they can blow the air into the room that shortens the duct run and also means the motors on the heat recovery unit can be turned down. Another thing to consider would be to select the correct unit. Often heat recovery units can be either oversized or undersized. It needs to be perfect for the property it's serving. So for instance, if you oversize a heat recovery unit, it can mean that there are larger motors, which equate to more noise. Equally, if you undersize a heat recovery unit, it could be running at 80%, 90%, even 100% motor capacity, which can lead to much higher breakout noise levels. Installers are key. Any good design or good specification can easily be ruined. If ductwork isn't supported correctly or if it's not sealed correctly, if ductwork's been changed, if they've used excess amounts of flexible ductwork that's been crushed, all of these things can lead to the heat recovery unit having to be turned up. If it's turned up, then any attenuators that may have been sized may not be fit for purpose, and so breakout noise can then reverberate into the rooms. Following the correct commissioning procedure is also important. If you open up all the valves or any of the dampers and then start to restrict them down when you're doing the, uh, the flow rate commissioning, that will equate to a low pressure system. That will also mean that you've got low motor speed. If, however, you restrict the valves down too much, then you're going to get velocity noise through those valves and the motor speed on the heat recovery unit will also have to be turned up. Finally, maintenance is key. If you don't maintain things like the filters on a heat recovery unit, then you're gonna get noise issues. Certainly if you've got things like a constant volume motor in there, because what'll happen is that'll continue to ramp up to achieve the flow rate required. And if you don't clean those filters, then that noise is gonna to start to be an issue. So as you can see, noise needn't be an issue with a heat recovery unit. As long as you follow the five key steps, design out the noise, choose the correct heat recovery unit and location, make sure it's installed correctly, make sure it's commissioned correctly, and finally, make sure it's maintained. Then you shouldn't have any kind of noise issues.